Public schools are in the midst of a crisis so dire that it's hard to put into words. But at school board meetings across the country, that hasn't stopped people from trying. Speakers should be respectful and observe proper decorum in their statements. Here in Northern Virginia, conservative parents are speaking the loudest, and they have a long list of grievances. I'm a survivor of Fairfax County Public Schools, and I don't even know where to begin. Many were angered by the prolonged pandemic shutdown. How do parents trust that you will follow through with five days a week in the fall? And some also questioned the efficacy of public health measures like masking. The masks that you require do not work against this variant. This is lunacy and cruel to kids. As their frustrations became politicized, other issues came to the fore. There was a backlash to anti-racist curriculum and affirmative action policies, and efforts to ban books from the school library. I am telling you, stop peddling porn to our kids. It's child abuse. Stop making children hate each other. It's racist. Because all of you have failed us. Much of this played out during Virginia's race for governor in 2021, when the crises in public education, real and manufactured, became a political opportunity. Several of the loudest speakers here were not just concerned parents, but right-wing political operatives as well. And they were instrumental in turning school board meetings into an all-out culture war. Republican candidate for Governor Glenn Youngkin used this Fairfax parent's speech in a campaign ad. I decided to check the titles at my child's school. Both of these books include pedophilia. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. I don't think Youngkin parents mobilized parents as a constituency and won the governor's office back from Democrats. And Republicans nationwide took notice. My message to parents is this. Parents matter, and that's what voters said loudly in November. This executive order particularly addresses the rights of parents. And we will protect and reassert that right. I do think that there has been an effort to exploit the concerns of some parents who really have been very challenged by how to manage our lives during this pandemic. And you could see all of these right-wing groups really flooding into Virginia to try to do a sort of a test run for 2022. It certainly appeared to work in Virginia. Conservative parents have a new champion in the state's capital. But back in the Democratic strongholds of Northern Virginia, they've cast themselves in the underdog role. Our next speaker is Carrie Lucas. We need leverage. We need them to actually care if we're happy or not, or if our kids are learning or not, or else we should be able to take our business elsewhere. Carrie Lucas says her kids' educations were sold short by liberal special interests, like the teachers' union. But when she stepped to the microphone at the school board meeting, Lucas represented another set of special interests for billionaire donors. This week is known as National School Choice Week, and it's time for Virginia to give parents like me the ability to just leave this school system that very clearly doesn't want us anyway. During her call for school privatization, Lucas didn't mention her day job. She's the president of a right-wing think tank called the Independent Women's Forum. Independent Women's Forum is unique. We bring conservative free market ideas to those beyond the base. The group has operated with support from a long list of wealthy interests. One of them is Betsy DeVos, who's devoted her career to diverting public dollars into non-union private schools. In 2019, IWF gave DeVos an award while she was Secretary of Education. The event was sponsored in part by DeVos's billionaire husband. But government is generally not the solution to any problem. It's generally the problem. And nowhere is that more true than in education. DeVos is just one funder behind these campaigns focused on school board politics. They're part of a decades-long effort to defund public schools, attack teachers' unions, and undermine the scientific community. I know that many of you are planning to run for school board, and I applaud you for doing that. Researcher Lisa Graves says the pandemic offered some of America's wealthiest people a prime opportunity to advance that agenda. The next group is Yes, Every Kid, just the latest sort of marketing scheme of Charles Koch's um, fortune to basically try to promote this idea of choice as a vehicle for taking money out of public schools, which he has been hostile to since the early 1960s in writings that I have obtained from archives. Well, what's driving the inequality? It's the government picking winners and losers, making poor people permanently poor. IWF is a longtime recipient of Koch funding, and for a time, the organization was even led by a Koch Industries lobbyist. Its strategy has been to marshal the voices of everyday women in an attempt to mainstream pro-corporate policies. Their ads during the debate over Obamacare, for example, 
featured this breast cancer patient, afraid of socialized medicine. If you find a lump, you could wait months for treatment and potentially life-saving drugs could be restricted. While fossil fuel interests fought proposals to reduce carbon emissions, IWF led a campaign of moms opposed to the teaching of climate science. We want parents to be involved and find out what their schools are teaching and make sure that a balanced you know, education is well, happening. Public schools are not supposed to be in the business of, a, of a setting political agendas, and that's what's happened with the global warming debate. The bigger the government, the better for women? You might want to rethink that one. In the pandemic, while corporate profits soared, IWF opposed efforts to raise the minimum wage, fund child care programs, and establish a federal paid leave policy. They have been extraordinarily hostile to common sense policies that would dramatically help most American families with kids. And yet, they want to rebrand themselves and rebrand their efforts as the parents' party. It might be hard to overstate the influence that Koch-funded groups have had on American politics, right down to the local level. But Lucas says her political adversaries do that all the time. I think the, the, this idea of Coke funding has been become such a boogeyman on the left. This is something that I think there's going to be a segment of, um, of the left that's just going to cling to because they don't want to wake up to the reality that this isn't, this isn't astroturf. It's true that parents across the political spectrum grew frustrated by the academic struggles their kids endured during the pandemic. IWF used that frustration to drive a wedge between parents and a longtime political rival, teachers' unions. Local union leader Kimberly Adams has had one main goal during the pandemic, to protect schools from COVID. Please ensure that the fully virtual option remains for all students and staff who'd feel safest at home. We as a nation have surpassed 400,000 deaths from COVID-19. This moment is critical. Adams faced criticism from some parents who felt that the unions went too far in putting their workers' interests before those of students. Teachers' unions really showed themselves to be you know, absolutely indifferent to kids and all about having their teachers work as little as possible. We have seen that our local school leaders and even school employees are under attack by those who are focused on short-term solutions with long-term repercussions. As we know that we have students we've lost. We know that they have family members they've lost. It's staggering that that number is so large, but I do think it would be exponentially larger if we hadn't done what we did. We had a lot of parents with us because they wanted to protect their kids. And a lot of us are parents. The union's Safe Schools campaign ran headlong into another political force. Early in his tenure, Virginia's new Republican governor, Glenn Youngkin, signed an executive order banning critical race theory, called for charter school expansion, and drew support from some Democratic legislators for a law that ended mask mandates in the state. In liberal suburbs like Fairfax County, where 70% of voters chose Biden in 2020, many parents aren't buying Youngkin's pitch. All you parents that just raised your hand, how many of you all think Glenn Youngkin is listening to you? And just yesterday on the floor of the House of Delegates, I had to listen to speech after speech of Republican delegates basically saying they want to defund the schools, right? Our schools are failures. We're going to take the money away. We're going to turn it over to the private sector to do. But with big national elections looming, one party has turned parents' frustrations into a billionaire-funded campaign slogan. And keeping schools open is only the start of the pro-parent, pro-family revolution. Parents matter. In addition, a Republican Congress must stand up for parental rights and parental power. We have a political party that is literally running on some of the biggest lies ever told in America. And this idea that they are now the parents' party is another facet of that lie. Certainly Republicans had long been frustrated with some of what was happening in public schools, but a lot of people in the middle and Democrats realized, you know, why is it, why is it that my kids are being shortchanged? The political party doesn't matter if you think your kids are being hurt and that their futures are being damaged. The protests at school board meetings continue, and Republicans are intent on carrying the parents' party mantle. If they can pull more suburban parents to their side, it might well carry them back to power. Yes. We are unapologetic and we will never back down because nobody comes in between us and, and our, our children. Yes. yes.